as a graphic artist and as a rapper, it's not that AI is gonna be better than us that should be our concern. Because there's people out there better than you that don't have your careers. And that's just art and commerce, you know? Your goal is how to present this to people. Yo, what's up, guys? I am Thomas, Dope as Yola, whatever you want to call me. Welcome back to the Dope as Usual podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, guys? We have a very special episode today. You guys know how excited I am to be talking about this for five and a half months since we found out when we were in Chicago, and I got hyped up. You guys know how important this is. Today is a legendary episode. This is Atmosphere. Ant and Slug, thank you for being here. Thank you for having us. Thanks for thank being here, guys. Thanks for having us on 420. I know of all days. Wait, am I allowed to drop the date? Yeah, I say that? that's okay. fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's 420 of all. It makes it so much more historic for this episode for us. Are, do you, are you guys, like, I see, like, a bong, and, I, like, do you guys talk about weed on this podcast? Uh, so my background is on YouTube. I have the biggest weed channel in YouTube. Oh. So that's what I do. So oh. I've been doing weed for, like, 10 years, probably. I, I did not do my research. Nah, you're good. You're oh. good. So, like, if you ever learn how to roll a joint, every time you were struggling in high school, like, I can't do this. I'm there to help you. <laughs> so I'm like I'm like Bob Ross of weed for the next 10 years now. All right. So that's why we were like, you know, let's transfer this shit over. And he was doing like all the comedian podcasts, the Rogans and all them. And he goes, let's do our own show. Here we are three years later. Man. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. Very exactly. excited. Yeah. So that's our, our I, background. I, well, it's a, it's a pleasure for us to be here right Appreciate now with you guys. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Real quick. You always look John Wick spiffy. I want to say that right now. Oh, when you walked you. in, I was like, what is he going to be wearing? Always like <laughs> elegant as hell. He's about to play the piano. Yeah. I think it's just, uh, it's just, it builds my self-esteem to walk into a place and, and uh, command respect to some degree. I yes. love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Damn. Yeah, yeah. Damn, we're a Vans. It's kind of weird because <laughs> it's almost like everywhere I go, like um, people always at least treat me halfway like, yes, sir. Ah. I get off on that. Yeah, it's always been that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got called Sarah recently. It was yeah, weird. Yeah. I, I like it, you know. But I've been getting that for years, decades. Yeah. Well, there it is, man. Yeah. I want to know. And one other thing, before we even get started, yo, the Ned Flanders mustache you've been rocking for for a while now. I like this whole <laughs> identity. It reminds me of when I was a kid. I used to see that uh that Beastie Boys where they had the mustaches on and they were running at each other. That's what this the sabotage video. sabotage video. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. I, I probably, I, pro I was probably influenced by that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I saw we went to. We, thank you again for inviting us to the show. I think it was October. We went. And that was I, at the Belasco. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. creepy ass place. Well, you think so? It's mad creepy. You don't okay. think so? All nah, those carvings on the wall, I'm like. Some those old theaters got some saying this. I liked it. I, I, liked I, I, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was yeah. that was that was one of my one of my favorite spots so far. Yeah. Oh, it, I just thought. Remember, we're looking up like. I'm gonna get possessed. It's like day. super gothic style, oh, old black like, like, decor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one thing I want to say that show I've been to you guys' shows, Berkeley, Oakland, Santa Cruz, all with live bands though. You guys all had live bands, and when I first walked, I'm like, live band? What is it? And that was like 2008, 2009. What got you guys to transition into that? Because it was straight you and you going hard on a stage for years, correct? And then you guys introduced live band, live music, because that's when I started seeing this. There had already been a lot of evolution going on with the live performance. Like when it first started, actually, it was me, another MC named Spawn, and uh, that dude right there was the DJ. His name's Stress. And um, from there, it just always, people would come and go in and out, and always was making the beats, but he didn't want to be on stage. So I, you, you, if it said atmosphere, you knew I was going to show up. And whoever else showed up with me, you might get idea, you might get Merce, you might yeah. get Mr. Dibbs, you might, you know, you just didn't know. It was all about who I could convince to roll with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then around 2005, I wanted to try doing a live band to see if I could, if that makes any sense. Yeah. But also just to push, to 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 switch things up, to to try to keep me from being too comfortable, whatever, whatever you call that kind of art evolution. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the same time. Coincidentally, Anthony was interested in becoming a part of this as well. And so we had a live band and Anthony on stage in 2005. And then from there, we still continue to do different versions of the live band along with Anthony on stage till it basically reached a point where Ant was the drummer. He was keeping the beats going. And then there was two dudes filling in, Tars. you know. And then from there, 
we thought how to push further beyond that. Because with a live band, you have a lot of room for error. And that part was dope to me. That, that the fact that things could go wrong more than just your oh, needle breaking. break your comfortability. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, gotcha. man. And, and, and so we figured out a way to do that with two DJs and then using, uh, you know, like tracking on stage, you know, live, live tracking going on along with DJs to, to bring back that room for error, to keep the sound bigger and more open, not so linear two channel. You know what I'm saying? Cause, cause com coming from a live band back to a DJ, you have all these things that you got to now consider. It's like, Oh, the, the, the sound goes like this again. When for a while there, we were like a, a gotcha. wall of sound. You feel me? Like, so we figured out how to do that with two DJs and that, excited me and that's where we're at now you know what i'm saying like that's still kind of the version of what we're working with now yeah when we saw you i remember i said it no live band because i've never seen like mm -hmm. that show yeah. you know as a fan you see all the clips and everything and you wish like damn that would be sick i'm not saying the live band's bad it was just when i saw just you two up there and there was another dj mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but i don't know and he's I was trying to introduce him to you guys, like to this culture and this world. He walked in and goes, is it for real? Like, I'm like, just wait. Well, man. The main thing I noticed, like I grew up in music, live shows. My dad was a musician and I grew up since I was a little kid in the studio watching live performances, was in music super deep myself. I've never felt that connection with all the people in the room, all the fans, with you up there, with your super introspective lyrics and everybody. It was just a different vibe than I've ever felt at a live performance. Do you feel like you have a really unique relationship with your fans? Oh, that's a great question, and and um, I appreciate the way you articulated that. What I think is going on, and is, is that our fans have that experience with themselves, and then when you put them in a room with other people who are looking for that, then there's now this community of that. You yeah. know, it's not hit driven, um, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> My fault. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, but but more so, it's it's driven by the audience's relationship or experience to the song. And so when you do have those people in a room together, and I, I don't think that's exclusive to us, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I think that, that that's part. Yeah, there's, there's a there's a there's a part of us that look for that from our music, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so we're fortunate that we have an audience that they bring it into the room, and then they allow us to go on stage, kind of like maybe the, you know how at church there'll be a band in the back with the organ, yeah. And they allow us to be that. But this is still their church. This is still their time to. That's way you put that. Kind of their their time to to, to 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 find that thing that they've been looking for. You know, plenty of people got hits, but not so many people are around for twenty years still touring and putting out new music. Well, close to like, thir oh, that 30, community right? is what we wanted Almost, for this show. Yeah, yeah. yeah, getting there. We got hits. We got hits. Well, <laughs> yeah. We got no, hits no, 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 you really feel me, want. feel me. And I know what you're saying, and I appreciate that. Um, yeah, you know, our, I think, relationship to this, as well as to our audience, as well as to each other, is is like just one, you said Bob Ross, it's one big happy accident. You feel me? It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like uh, we just keep doing what we feel is genuine to us mm -hmm. and trying to do it as best as possible and just hope it works. For everybody, yeah. feel That's me. Hope I hope that hope that this, you know, it's weird. Like when we book a show, one of my concerns is, yo, is everybody gonna feel like they got their money's worth? Because your concerts are expensive now. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, when I was a kid, you go see a show for seven bucks or something. You know what I mean? Like five. Mm -hmm. Now I realize people are putting their resources, their time, their money, babysitters, babysitters. Yeah. You feel me? Like you know, it's a lot. And so we still have that type of, for lack of a better word, insecurity of making, wanting to make sure everybody feels like they got what they came for, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And and I think stuff like that helps keep pushing and inspiring us to, to, to treat it with that type of respect, to respect this the way that it shows it to us, you know? Not just our craft, not just what lyrics, beats, whatever, but even the relationship with the audience. Yeah, and respecting your sound. You have such a unique, like authentic sound and even sampling the new album a little bit, like listening oh, to yeah. it. Thank you again. So awesome, like, yeah, yeah. such a, a unique, it. and I love how you really like brought back like long songs, really letting everything build up into the song. It reminded me of Pink Floyd, honestly. I used to let the song build oh, nice. before Party it comes bass. in with all the instrumentation and stuff. I love that in hip hop. You know, no lie, I, when, I, when I called uh, the label and said, hey, we're working on another record, that was what I tried to sell them. I, I tried to. For I real? said, That's, "This is going to be our Pink Floyd record." Oh, so when good. you said that, just now, <laughs> listen, I haven't even had the chance to say that out loud to nobody yet, besides them. So the fact that you called that out is beautiful to me. And obviously, we know we're not Pink Floyd, but 
what I what I interpret from what you're saying is that you know we you might say overthought what we were working on. We, not we weren't just coming from a place of instinct or uh, past experience or we know how to do this or we, we have all that. All the things we've done, we still carry. We still know how to do them and we do them. But also trying to figure out how to apply new challenges to ourselves, new you know I like to call them ceilings, new Easter eggs to hide, new things to do. Yeah. You know I felt like as we were making this, I felt like this was our version of a of of a of a underground rap Pink Floyd record. You know, but that's just really me on my arrogant tip in the car talking to the label. Like the, yeah. for you to say it's that, gonna be that Pink feels Floyd that, status. <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that yeah, feels that's, really yeah, good. Yeah. That, yeah. that feels it's really a good. vibe. It's yeah. in the production. You can hear it. Like how much time went into that. How much thought so many other song. realities exist simultaneously. Cold turkey might be great on sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. It's fume. They look at the problem in a different way. Instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habits? Fume is an innovative, award-nominated device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fumes is completely natural. Fume uses flavored air instead of harmful chemicals. And I'm gonna be honest, every single flavor I tried is bomb and they're all natural. Your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting and stressful situations. Honestly, it tastes more flavorful than I thought it would. Stopping is something people put off because it's hard, but switching to Fume is easy. Fume has over 100,000 customers and thousands of success stories. There's no reason the next one can't be you. So head over to tryfume.com, that's T-R-Y-F-U-M.com, and use our code D-A-U. That's going to get you 10% off of the journey pack. So go to tryfum.com, tryfume.com. Dot com. Use code DAU and get an additional 10% off your order today. I watched the video. Uh, okay. Uh, first off, I love that Merz is the homeless man. Thank you very much. That was great. That was awesome. Um, I don't want to, I mean, I listened to it. I'm not going to start saying anything. I noticed that obviously has a they live vibe on that video. That's what I got, the Roddy Piper movie. That's kind of what I felt on it. Yeah, we're definitely John Carpenter fans. Yeah. But I don't yeah, I don't know if that was necessarily the the inspiration, well, just, but it's totally yeah, what in the I, video, yeah, yeah, and everybody's yeah, yeah, yeah. going like, "So you're, yeah, yeah, you're uh, what is his name? Nada. That's his name in the movie. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "So you're Nada." And Merz is the other homie that they're fight. I was smoking. I only joy. know it's. I only yeah. know that it's Keith David and uh, and Roddy Roddy Piper. I don't know any character names. I just know the actors. Oh, his name's movie. Nada. Oh, I, I only know that because I bought the toy recently. I go, "What's well, yeah, oh, what is Roddy right. Piper?" And it says <laughs> NADA. Uh, and they got the weirdest fight scene at the ball. Best time. fight scene. That's it's nine crazy. minutes long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Beat the shit at each other in an alley yeah, over some yeah, glasses. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Watch where they live. Yeah. Um, oh, the reason I bring it up is you got the alien theme going on. I'm not going to spoil it. I heard some more stuff. Reminded me, not reminded me, it gave me the vibe of like storytelling, Deltron 3030. I get to go on a space adventure on this one. That's how I was kind of like, because I told you all the time, when me and Marty met, Marty's very East Coast. He grew up in his, you know, your music, your era, like that's, and I'm over here like trying to introduce him like, yo, this is the living legends. This is who these guys are. This is, you know, 3M. You know what I mean? Like I'm trying to introduce him to that. And I showed him Deltron 3030. And I know obviously you wanted to be Del. I get that. You're a very big fan. So I got this. This is just instrumentals. I found the Deltron 3030. Oh, I don't know if you have that. I have it. You do have it? <laughs> Pretty I don't. Sure. I don't think I have this. Then that, that's I, yours. I, I just specifically it. don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't just have. The, I don't have the instrumentals. I got the full album. It's yeah, funny. I got we the full were just album, talking about this record like yeah. a week ago. Yeah. yeah, we were just talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. I used to deliver pizza yeah. and sell weed. When I deliver pizza, that's, that was my thing. I put all my my scale and my shit in my bag, the pounds or whatever, mm -hmm. and I'd walk up and we'd go in, and no one would ever suspect a fucking thing. So I used to listen to. I used to buy CDs. That's my thing. I buy CDs at Streetlight Records in Santa Cruz next to. Um, yeah. The Catalyst, you guys know, that's where, yeah, you know, yeah. and you guys played at the uh, community center downtown because you guys obviously not enough people fit in the Catalyst for you guys, but that's where I would buy all my stuff. So that record, that's what it reminds me of, like just fun, underground, good time. I, I appreciate that. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks dope. Dope. Dope, dope. Yeah. Um, But back to your album. It releases May 5th. May 5th. May the 5th be with you. May the 5th be with you. There we go. It's going to be... Oh, is that, is that why you kind of picked it, the alien theme? No, we don't get just to pick randomly? the day, man. The label tells us, your record's coming out on this day. And you just go, okay, yes, sir. Sick, thank you. <laughs> Whatever you say, <laughs> sir. Um, no, May 5th was, uh, it, it was accidentally fresh to be made. Accidentally 5th. fresh. I like that. To be made. I wake up. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I think I think it's I think more so it was a, a matter of like when you can line everything up. When you turn an album in, at least for a group like us, you want to get vinyl. Vinyl right now has got such a long lead time. It takes a long time to get vinyl pressed, and so you go, okay, so when can we have? physical pieces and then you try to line everything up so that it works together you know what i mean obviously uh we got lucky with the may the fifth be with you i i, I wish that i thought i had to like i don't know print a sticker or something that said that because it kind of even the concept of thinking like that fits into the concept of the album uh yeah you know what i mean and so so that was just accidentally fresh but uh, i i wanted to say something about the they live thing like we weren't basing the video around that but because that movie is such a had such an imprint on a certain part of the culture it is already existing in our heads that movie is and so once you get the video going it became obvious like oh that is kind of like they live people are going to see that i see it and it informs you as you go everything that you watch or listen to or read informs the art that you make as well even when you don't realize it so that's again accidentally fresh really it's alf do you remember Elf? Elf, yeah, the alien. The alien. What, yeah. did, what did the alien always want to eat? The cat. Dude, I can't remember. The family that. cat. And the cat. And the alien was oh. existing with this family, gotcha. finding out how to assimilate within this like American family, and that was basically the structure of the show. And so that was the idea for the video. We were in a truck in the middle of nowhere, Massachusetts, and I just started. Oh, what yeah, if we did yeah, this? Yeah, and, and it one, just yeah. came out, you know what I mean? And then I was like, let's make a video. And he was so like, that's the, he was like, no, don't. Do concepts. <laughs> you just make shit up. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> he was like, no, don't do that. And I was like, no, it's gonna be fine. Yeah. And and, and I, I still don't know if he likes the video. He might. No, no, no. I don't like the video actually. <laughs> but but I don't like any of our videos really. You know what I mean? Why? I just I just they're hard. After a while, I look back and go, oh, that's that's all right. You know what I mean? It take it's just I just have a relationship with the music that's made. And then when it someone else's vision goes on it, it's like, hey, I wasn't thinking about uh, that. Hey, uh, even so if it's my idea, because there are a couple of the videos over the years, the, even the worst ones. Were What's the awesome. worst one you think? Come on. Oh, we had this one video where um, he's playing up. Oh, that video is amazing. <laughs> my yeah, dude, like what seriously, that video is <laughs> called, just, uh, it's called My Lady Got Two Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's yeah. the one we made it look like it's like a, a like a song from the 70s or early yeah, yeah. 80s. Like American bandstand style. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you didn't like and it? I got, I got mannequins. There's that video man, was yeah, amazing. Yeah. And yeah. that's the thing too. Yeah. So here's the thing. We make art together. That's already a collaboration, right? I have a vision of what it is. He has a vision. We see different colors sometimes when we're doing it. We have different ideas of what it is, but we both know, hey, it means a lot to both of us. Let's yeah. let other people hear it. Well, then sometimes you make a video for those. Now you're trusting another person to have this vision to go with it. And yeah. when you tie their vision I get, I get you. to you know yours, I mean? it could be real difficult. If if you take yours as serious or if you nurture it the way that, that we do, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, it could be difficult to, I Hand just, off. I have to disconnect yeah. the two. Yeah. I have to go, I'm not even going to worry about, how is this video? If this wasn't mine, would I watch it again? That's but, what we say. You know what I'm saying? If this isn't like, ours, would we like it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the number one thing. And that's how I got to see stuff like that because I don't make videos for real. And so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really not good at telling you what's fresh. I can just tell you what I like. Mm -hmm. So trying to marry somebody else's visuals to your music, that can be hit or miss. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying yeah, now because yeah. it's not what you yeah. were entailing when you were thinking like, oh, yeah. it's not what I thought would happen during mm -hmm. that baseline or something mm -hmm. i get it i get yeah it. i just don't know how to separate myself that with that stuff yet i still don't so you're saying like i don't even like how i was in the video i noticed like you're not you just do a little quick cameo in the video like mm -hmm. i said you're very like into the shadows and yeah back. yeah 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 i noticed yeah. that so um i've i've watched so, so much of you guys' stuff you are very rarely even in interviews no, not too often. No. Very rare. Mm -hmm. I found mm -hmm. one that you guys released when life gives you lemons. Oh, we made those on our own. That, that it looked like you guys just shot yeah, it yeah, in a garage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was and like, you're a, like, I want to mm. be done with this video. I go, oh yeah, he doesn't like videos. Doesn't he? <laughs> I feel, I feel that sometimes. So I get you. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's a uh, insecurity stuff. You know, just like seeing myself on. Like I, I'd be really hard pressed to imagine watching this. You know what I mean? I will though, just I feel for you. the pain of it. <laughs> but just how it is you know that's just how my mind works and uh it just so happens that with my career it's worked out in a weird way that i don't do this type of stuff too often or i'm not shown in a lot of the pictures all the time and it just but comes like in it handy it, it comes in handy a little yeah yeah mm -hmm. well if it's perfect man yeah, if it yeah. works it works but yeah um, yeah one quite or one thing when life gives you lemons in two days will be 15 years ago 
by the way. Oh, shit. By the way, it would be 15 years ago that it released. Huh. What were you guys doing exactly when that happened? When that album dropped, do you remember what you were doing that day? I was wearing some horrible <laughs> jeans. I See, promise. Remember. Yeah, because I, yeah, I guarantee I was, I, I, if I were to look, no, I don't remember. I could just keep Oh, you're just saying. Yeah, okay, man. Gotcha. I was wearing jeans that were like too light, and I was probably wearing a, 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 a button up with a little collar golf. I don't know what those shirts are called. Charlie Sheen shirts. American Apparel had them, right? And I had like every color because I didn't know how to dress. So I would just be like, well, I like that shirt. Let me buy 12 of them. And then I still live like that. Like I like aside from the hoodie, everything I'm wearing, I've got like multiple copies because I just don't want to think about it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm Homer Simpson. I'm not like uh, Ned Flanders, bro. Like like you said right about the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm all about dependable. And does it work? If it works, I'll drive it. You feel me? Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but I'm the same way though. I have like... Just rows and rows of black polos. You know what I mean? Oh, I could imagine. Yeah, it's all dude. Like gray, gray pants and shit. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's a damn th store. Is it the yeah. same thing when you go into like approach a new album between you two collaborating on it? Like I'm not. I wouldn't say how many. There's more than twenty tracks on this album, so I don't know if that means you guys made a couple hundred or did <laughs> you make twenty five? <laughs> not no more. Not, we don't do that no nah, more. That doesn't happen like it used to. Now we spend more time with each song and that all is just evolution too because you know you start doing stuff one way and then slowly your techniques will change it's like painting right you, you will learn new things oh this cap does this or you, you you'll you will yeah. slowly and, and, in. and everything that you learn becomes a part of you now you're informed by it but you're gonna move on and still do something different but you'll still drag all that shit that you learned with you you know and yeah. so and so now this particular record we did in a way that we'd never done a record before we um Every song you hear was made for the album. There are no bonuses. There were no songs that didn't go on there because what we did is we made it in sequence. So when he gave me the first beat, which was the song OK, it's mm -hmm. the first song on the album, I didn't even know necessarily we were making an album yet. You, we hadn't really crossed that threshold. Like He just said, make something with this. I did. And then he was like, all right, this is the second song. Mm -hmm. And he gave me the second beat. And then I wrote the second song, which is track two on the album. And yeah. then I'm like, okay, we're making an album. Sick. And now I have to figure out all my sciences and here's how I'm going to approach this and whatever, whatever. But basically every, every song we made, we made it in sequence with how we wanted the album to go, which kind of gave us the chance to like really, instead of just having a bunch of songs and then figuring out, I want to yeah. put this one here and this mm -hmm. one here. We could listen to it go as we went to go, okay, it's got to go over here next. Or, wow. But also you'll hear running things through the songs where maybe track three, you'll hear an instrument keep playing into track four. Pink or Floyd shit. Well, like you were saying. Like, I'm saying, like, like yeah, yeah. The, the, the thing top. about it too is there's stuff in there that I don't think listeners will ever hear because it was just there for us. It, there's stuff in there. Oh, gosh. There's well, Easter, Easter eggs. eggs. Yeah, that yeah. maybe somebody will. Yeah. Or if I talk about it, somebody might hear it. You know what I'm saying? But for yeah. the most part, like, there were things involved in it that were like, they're all part of it. It's all encrypted in there for the experience for us as well as for whoever else. I miss that in hip hop. A lot of times, I mean, you just get like a batch of tracks that I went and did. I miss like the conceptual, this is the theme of this project. Yeah. All these songs are gonna like blend into that theme in their own way. That's like real artistry to me. I mean, that's, you know, that's like the late nineties, early two thousands. And now here we are 20 years later, so I don't know, maybe we're just accidentally redoing that because that's how it all repeats itself, yeah. you know, because we were doing that kind of shit back then. You know what I mean? With the, with the, I mean, we, all our albums are concept albums, but nobody can hear it because the concept generally is just me. You know what I mean? Like, oh, what am I thinking about? What yeah. am I dealing with in life? Mm -hmm. Then musically, the concept is him. What sounds does he like right now? What is he into? What does he think is, I'm going to, I'm going to work on this one. I'm going to, you know what I mean? And so, yeah. Uh, not to take nothing away from when people compile songs. I like to call those, you know, playlists or mixtapes yeah. or what have you. It's the normal way to do it. Yeah. Cause it. Because in essence, there's an energy that you do capture when you make music, period. And so when you're making music in that way of compiling, just let me take all the songs I got there, the best ones, and I'm going to put them together. Yeah. Now you're handing somebody this 40 minute experience of your energies, which is just as dope. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, great. I don't think there's a right or wrong way yeah. to do it. It's a different approach. Yeah. Yeah. So did you get any pushback from the label once you had this chronological masterpiece, or did they say no? Yeah, I it. No, they're they're so um, pretty sure they trust artist you guys. friendly. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah, and, yeah. And, and yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they they trust us. We trust them. Like, yeah. really, everybody everybody has got the same intent. They all want to see something happen that people 
react to, enjoy, appreciate, love. You know what I'm saying? And so what you do is you go, okay, well, I have this thing here. And then everybody now has to think about and figure out how to artistically communicate that to people, to you guys, how you guys, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it, it, so every, so when it's like that, especially after working together for so long, you know, you, you understand where it's going. And still there's challenges, things pop up. You can't, you know, life is different. You can't just do the same thing over and over because it won't work, you know what I'm saying? And so it's like, even, even something like a record label has to come up with new tricks. You know what I'm saying? Like new things to do in bed. You gotta keep coming up with it if you want to keep the relationship amazing. You know what yes. I'm saying? And I feel like that, that, that's, that's kind of the situation we've been in for this long. That's awesome. That's what you yeah. want out of your experience with a label. I just don't want to get fired. That's all. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> That's a great job, man. Yeah, this is the best job I've ever job. had. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to get fired. Yeah. Um, I got a question. Just from listening to you guys' music so long, mm -hmm. what did you grow up listening to? Because um, some of the shit you sampled, some of the stuff you mm -hmm. do. Uh, one of my favorite songs is why was it? Is it why the Cade Bird sings? That's what it's called. It's on Sevens. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that right. Joint? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of my favorite songs ever. Yeah. Oh really? I, I love that shit. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. And then the screamo starts. Oh, yeah. I love it, man. I that was it. definitely him bringing that <laughs> that screamo uh, style. I yeah, loved yeah, yeah. it, dude. That's why I don't know yeah. why. Just that's one of the first albums I mm. ever heard. So you know, it's funny about that. I've never, I never was really big into rock, but that was around the time I started exploring rock records and well, besides the sampling like drums in rock, you know, that was always a, a thing. But I never was into rock really, and I just started getting more and more open to it as we were moving right along and as I explored other music. When I was a kid, it was only soul and R and B and jazz. Only like doo wop and whatnot. No, 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 oh, no. That's like, what I grew up on. Like eighties like style and the seventies stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, James Brown even before that. So that's how my household was. And that's all I was about. And so once hip hop hit and I got into that, and then that took over. Meshed. Yeah, and it's all can it's this the same trajectory you know so i didn't get into rock and shit like that until i was like damn they're 30 some years old oh wow yeah, yeah. see i grew up on pink floyd led zeppelin and yeah james brown or little anthony because my grandpa and i didn't listen to the radio yeah, 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 so yeah. when i found you guys i was listening to what all the living legends albums mers album i just got Merz for president and somebody said try atmosphere i go i was 18 years old mm -hmm. i was in santa i told you i was in santa cruz I'm like i'll pick it up i'll try it out <laughs> and i got god loves ugly and overcast and I'll tell you a little story. My second night of being on my own is mm -hmm. when I first heard you guys. Put it on. I'm like, I'm going to listen to a couple of tracks. I'm going to go to sleep. I got to open the pizza spot in the morning. Fuck. Listen to both albums back to back. And I smoked bowls in my room. My second night on my own ever in my life. So yeah. I'm like, ooh, what is this? So you guys been there since I've been a, an adult. So I appreciate that shit. So I just wanted to ask certain questions that yeah, yeah. even when I was sitting there like, what, is this? what does that mean? <laughs> you know, that's, dope. So what that that's really dope. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, I, as a fan, I got some questions yeah. real quick. I got a, mm. a few. Just became. I know it's mm. for the fans to interpret. I get that. My interpretation, please tell me if I'm wrong or right, is just a friendship going south. I mean, sure. Okay, so it's just left to interpret. I mean, it is. I'll tell you what it is. Please. You know what I'm saying? But keep your interpretation. Because that's a, that is that, good. And that's and not only that, but that's also that's the important interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, when you ask an artist where a song came from, and if their story is better than yours, they're lying. Okay, so that song is actually, I ripped it off. It was a poem um, that was written by my wife's uncle's homie. And I never really had the chance to meet that person, but I know her uncle, and he told me about this poem about uh, camping with, with friends, and one of them became a wolf and ran off in a good way, uh, not in a bad way. Um, I heard what he told me and then I interpreted it and took it to where I took it, you know, and made it more about waking up and um, realizing that your friend is missing and you're worried about them. And then realizing that your friend is running with wolves and worrying about them. And then that point that comes for some people when they realize their friend has become a wolf and now you have to worry about them in a different way you have to fear them you know and that's where i took it you know because i felt like for starters it's a story that i don't hear you know what i'm saying but it's 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 a reality for a lot of us mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying uh you could be the wolf or you could be the friend but it's a reality it happens in friendships it happens in relationships those moments come where you have to cut somebody off because they're toxic whatever yeah. you feel me so it's like 
So that was a story I just had never heard. So when I when I took the original poem, which was also a beautiful concept, you know what I'm saying? But I just took it and, and, and told a story that was a little bit more relative to myself. Because I'm not really a camping kind of dude. Um, yeah, so <laughs> what I heard, I go, oh, this is, this is not, he's not really camping and looking for footprints. Yeah, Something's yeah, yeah. going on. Uh, but I love that song, you know? But I've heard more interpretations about that song than any other song that I've ever really? written. Really? Which is crazy to me because it's like some of my songs are so obtuse and hard oh, to oh, understand that I'm like, yeah, I yeah, was yeah. Like, you know, let me, let me start with this lighter one. And that song is dope because I got to say, um, there's a line in there talking about you turn into a drumstick, like a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, like, if it was a cartoon, it, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh yep. man, to, to be able to actually say that with a straight face <laughs> is. I but love it worked. It, I love it, it worked. It flowed. I didn't giggle. I, I yeah. was just listening. Storytelling, man. That's that's music. I mean, when it comes to music, like that's my shit. Uh, my next one, uh, hair. Is this a story you've heard? Hair is a uh, no. No, no, obviously no. you didn't die in a car accident. No, 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 nothing of the sort. Yeah, you know? It's definitely not a autobiographical story. No. You know, it's like to me, it's just that it's a it's a story that's sold to a particular generation, 20 year olds, let's say, books and films, the romance of meeting somebody, being into them, mm -hmm. and then you fucking die. You know what I'm saying? And that's really kind of what it was. But I told it through the lens of somebody who might have my life, right? Somebody who just got off stage in a small club, et cetera, et cetera. But it really it's not really like a hard story to go for, you know what I mean? No, like, no I just wanted to know because the first time I heard it, because I'm getting built up, my like, oh, oh damn! <laughs> you know, there's another question you should be asking about hair. What? What is up with part two and part three? Because we have this a three part story, and all of them are released, but a lot of people have never put it together. Stop! But how? How is it? How is it more story to after part one? You, I, I don't know how familiar you are with our catalog. I'm trying to scan every album, like. <laughs> I have a very okay. photographic memory, so, so I'm trying to there's, there's, get there's, on my Spotify list. There's, oh, there's two other parts of the film, and oh my God. they're in there what somewhere. Is it? Come I'm on. Not in there somewhere. How about this? If, you're, if anybody me. knows, <laughs> don't tell me. Put it in the comments for this guy. Don't tell me. <laughs> yeah. All right? All right. And when, when this releases- When, when you we, find we'll, it, you're we'll going to be like, I can't believe I never Did saw this. Or like, you might go, I can't believe they bothered making this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it could go either way. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. Because because it's we made it very obvious. Well, we, I mean, but there's it can't spread be, out I mean, by I a lot guess, of time. I guess you could say the waitress because she was a waitress getting off work, going to the bar. I could say anything. I'm not going to say nothing. Damn I'm, it. I'm, All right, now I'm going to listen. Yeah. This gonna, just got to fester yeah, until yeah, you figure yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, isn't that fucked up? But just remember, there's three total. It's good. Three total. You, so I got one. You got one, yeah. Bastard. Damn it. <laughs> I'm trying, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that later. All right? And then obviously, you already know the last one's going to ask. Because this one made my mom go, what the hell is this? I go, mom, just sit down and listen. It must have been you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, because my mom introduced me to everything in life. Every Depeche Mode, every single thing oh, you could yeah, think yeah. of, my mom, I owe her for every piece of music I ever listened to in my life. Mm -hmm. Except for Will Anthony or Charles Bradley, shit like that. Yeah, yeah. My grandpa. Yeah. Uh, one with the tattooed hands. My mom goes, what the hell is this? I go, maybe he's on acid, mom. Interpret it how you want. <laughs> like, I don't know. She so, didn't like it? She was mad? No, she was like, what is he talking about? I go, just fucking listen. Me and my mom have a- uh, What is he talking about? A relationship like, shut up, fool. That's me and my mom now. <laughs> what is he talking about in that song? God. That's what I'm getting. I don't know. Oh, no, no, that's cool. That's I'm with it. You, I, I was expecting more than one word. No, I'm, I'm trying to interpret, because it's so hard to interpret that I went, what does this mean? And I'm listening to it and go, eh, maybe one day I go to a show, I'll ask, but never did I think I'd be able to sit down and go, what does this mean? Like, personally, I don't know. It's all left up to interpretation. I get it's art, but to the person, what does it mean to you? When you're writing, go, oh. when you're done, I know you went, damn. That was intense. So I've told the story about where that song came from numerous times, and I don't even think the story is that important anymore. Um, I've, that's the song that I've heard people interpret for me for now over 20 years, you know? And my new reaction to people asking me what that song is about is something that I came up with yesterday, actually. Oh, damn. And um, it's a joke I heard, and I'm going, and I rewrote the joke to make it mine, to own it, because that's what we do. Um, <laughs> And so I will answer that song for your mom if she wants to know what the hell it's about. Atheism, the original nonprofit organization. I like that. Oh. It should atheism. be a t-shirt. It didn't hit as hard. It's supposed to be a joke. No, Fucking, I like it. It's atheism. Because it's what the interpretation, like why we came up with the yesterday. That's not the punchline. The punchline is it's the original nonprofit organization. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, okay, I got you. No, I get it. I get it. But I thought timing. Like you said I got to work on the I thought there was yeah, more. I gotta figure also, out. guys, I'm sorry. I got kind of stoked. I have joints rolled. Do you guys want a joint? Oh man. Um. I mean, it's four twenty. If not, no worries. You got other shit to do. Just throwing it out. I, there. I, I like, thought it kind of smelled like sound set in here. I was like, uh, <laughs> like sound set in here. So I have joint. It, it, it's up to you guys, or just take them for later. There, I'll I'm take gonna, it. I'll take it for later for yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, for later. I'm you gonna. Guys. You know what? I'm gonna give it to the pilot when we fly home. I'm gonna be like, hey, bro. <laughs> Hey, hey, yeah. here. Smoke his ass. for you. This is for you. Do you guys, do you guys mind? Oh, yeah, okay, no. No, go for it. Yeah, Okay, it. okay. I completely uh -huh. forgot. What, what's your the song? The song you? Tattooed Hands is, um, is, is just about trying to figure out what you believe in. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, because she is presenting both. And I'm like, well, which one is the one? Or what is it? Or is it a good versus evil? Or what's going on? And I ultimately just bounce. I don't even commit because yeah. I'm scared of commitment. So that's 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 what the song is about. You feel me? That's where I was. That's what I wanted. To I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry for the joke. No, I'm sorry I, for the joke. I, I, <laughs> hey man, I'm going to figure out how to tell that shit so it's funny though. I'm going to figure Rodney Dangerfield, just watch him go at the end yeah, of yeah, it yeah. or some shit. He has good timing. <laughs> yeah, the best he, timing. He can yeah. make anything fucking mm -hmm. hilarious. Um, okay, it's sorry. The it's the punctuation oh, at the end. It's all, you know. It's the way you hit him. Yeah, 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 exactly, that's, dude. Yeah, he exactly. used to sell aluminum siding or some shit. Yeah, yeah, like that. yeah, 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 yeah. He's fifty-four years old. I yeah, use yeah, it all, yeah. say it all the time. Yeah. Like, don't give up. Yeah, fifty-four years old. This yeah. one started popping. It's Hilarious. It's totally amazing. Ninety. Yeah. Come amazing. on, man. Half your life, you're, you're popular, dude. and you work. You're funny your whole life, but only half of it people are like, I agree now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fuck it. It's yeah. cool. That's it's why. Amazing. Like, we did this for ten years. It just started working two years ago. I just did it because it's fucking fun and make people smile. Yeah. If you're smiling, I'm still. Oh, this is the same yeah. way with us. We, I mean, shit. We, I had a regular job until I was 35. I was a oh, janitor shit. till 05. Matter of fact, where? Listen, we were selling records, and this dude was yeah. still doing janitor work because it was like, why stop yeah. the hustle? You feel me? Of it's course. like <laughs> he had the hustle. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how I always yeah. see it. It's a job. Yeah. Saying, like, it's a job. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was like, it just seemed like the right thing to do. You know what I mean? Um, so when you actually we did 15 years ago, when uh, Life of Limbs came out, yeah, I was gonna say I quit my job. No, I quit a few years before that, but it was still new. Like this was all like you quit new. your job in 2005, yeah, to go on tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. So his first tour with me, so he didn't really even take a break. He yeah. went from janitoring to dropping shit. And it was funny too, because the funny thing about that shit is, <laughs> two ways. My but, jokes uh, suck. My no, jokes. Fine. No, it's great. You're good. It's great. It's great. It's great. <laughs> You know, the funny thing is, is uh, um, when I went on that tour, because he was like, you know, I, would, I wanted to put more, a little more DJing stuff into the band stuff. So now or never. And I was like, oh, I probably should try it. You know what I mean? I really did. You talk about, I'm very not a social person. So I was like, oh, man, I, but I, I got to try this, right? Mm -hmm. So I told my job, all right, two months and I'm going to come back and all that. And then we went out in two months, had time in my life, changed my world. He told me to, he was like, it's going to change your life. I was like, yeah, whatever, you know. I went out and he changed my life. And I got back and I was supposed to go back to work. And I was just like, oh, man, I'm going to wait a couple of days before I go back to work. Because I had to decompress, man. I was on tour. Yeah. Tour is a weird thing at first. I was like, man. And then I called and they were like, oh, we filled your position. And I was like... Thank God. You know what I mean, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't have to do nothing. You know, they didn't were like, we quit. didn't. Yeah, they yeah. were like, we know you're not coming back. You know. Well, good. I'm like, fucking glad this yeah, happened, yeah. man. It was great. But then I called him up. I was like, can I keep this uh, DJing job? He <laughs> <laughs> was like, yeah. I was like, well, I'll let you try out. <laughs> I'm gonna have tryouts. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was awesome. So ever since, yeah. Well, I'm glad this happened. It's, it always works that way. I like what was it? Easy. Put these damn glasses on. All right, I feel good. Let's go out there. There's always <laughs> yeah, something yeah. like you. You're the glasses. Like get your ass out here. Yeah, man. It's something that and they, like I didn't talk on camera until six years into doing shit. I was like, I don't want to talk on camera. My voice. Oh, yeah, I want to hear my yeah, own yeah. voice. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah, let's try it. It's yeah. it's weird. I don't go to parties. I'm the guy in the back smoking joints. And I leave and say I, I showed up, man. I promise. Oh man, yeah. I hate I hate it. Yeah. Even though I'm super social when I need to be. Yeah. So I feel you on that aspect, man. I've, I've definitely grown. A tour has taught me that. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I'm like, oh, shit. I'm starting to figure out my lane. Yeah. And, and all these people are like, yo, mm -hmm. appreciate you guys. So, so happy to be here. Like, yeah, that, that's, yeah, yeah. that gets got to give you a little, like, yeah, yeah. pep, right? Yeah. If you're, yeah. When you're told you're doing a great job every day, 
It's like, <laughs> come on, it's hard not to like. Yeah, yeah it makes it easy. Good job know? again. <laughs> yeah, like, really? I never heard that's that real. for like the first thirty years of my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now Things I hear. Yeah, that's a great like point. That. I never yeah, even yeah, thought yeah. of that. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, here every day. I really think about that. Like all our fans, whenever they say like that really is fuel when things are tough or you're like just going through yeah, real yeah. life shit, mm-hmm. like that really is like extra backup fuel. Hell yeah. yeah it yeah. makes you stoked even when you're like, yeah, yeah. It's just not selling right. Like, but people yeah, are happy. Man. Yeah. You got to be happy with that. It's amazing. Yeah. Very, very fortunate. Is, is <laughs> weed been a part of your guys' process the whole time? Yeah. I mean, mine, you mm-hmm. know, um, Define process. You mean life, Writing, life, recording, life, living. <laughs> life. It's like that. You know, and so it's it's not always part of the writing or the recording. You know, just like it's not always part of riding in an airplane, and life, it's not always yeah, yeah you know, like yeah, but Sweet's but it's been it's homie. always been present. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Weed and sugar. Weed and sugar. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> question. I gotta, what did you? What's your top three movies? Top three favorite movies? I, I like to ask this for guests, but. It's not like you're sitting there referencing shit and you're so, you know, when some artists are like, oh, I at least know they like this direction of something. I don't think I've ever heard of reference dropped or none of that. Uh, ball pop culture with the arms and feet thing. So I always thought, like, yo, I wonder what the hell this fool likes. What did you grow up watching? Well, What's your favorite movies? It's not my favorite, but this dude basically has to bribe me not to make Star Wars references in the songs because there's always <laughs> yeah. hidden. Gross. There's always hidden Star Wars. You go you, like like now that I've said that, you'll realize that there's a lot of them. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It's, now it's, we've got it down. All right, once a record, right? Once, a, <laughs> once an <laughs> album. <laughs> really, you were very subtle with it, man. Damn, I didn't even yeah, catch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard to say favorite films. It's hard to say favorite books. I can't. I don't know how to say favorite albums. So what I could say is movies that I've seen more than there, other movies. There you go. Purple Rain, hands Great. down. I've seen that movie more than any other Love movie it. in my life. Um, and then after that, I would say Training Day. And then after that, I would say you know it's it's probably one of the Star Wars movies. Right. <laughs> Specifically now with you know a bunch of kids, it's like oh you end up revisiting movies that you saw when you were younger and, and then yeah, seeing sure. them again and again. So I think that having kids bumped up the, the Star Wars numbers for me. Yeah. I have too many. I, I'm crazy about a lot of stuff, but, and my go-to has always been Godfather. It's just the easy one to say. All it's three true. at once, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, definitely one and two, but uh, Apocalypse Now actually. Great movie. It's the same director, but uh, man, that movie, it, it's, it, it influenced a lot of what I do, uh, mood-wise, and you might not, it's just like uh, half the time I'm making music, I see the colors of that movie in my head. It's pretty trippy, yeah. I, I've, I just love that movie. And I recently, you know, Hearts of Darkness, there's a, is a doc, you've seen that? No. It's a, it's a documentary made at the time. His wife filmed a, a documentary making the movie. And that's amazing. That's an amazing movie. But there's also Francis Ford Coppola talking over the Apocalypse Now. Yeah, narration. the commentary. It's fucking Whoa. amazing. It's brilliant. And that. matter of fact, if you're on YouTube right now, check that out yeah. after this. It's pretty amazing. It's just like all the details and all the things he talks about. It's like artistry times 10. You know what I mean? It's just like all the little nip, the little facts. It's super, super dope. Dude, you're the one clicking DVD commentary. You're that. I'm like, you know, who, I who did, watches this? I always yeah, thought yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I never saw that. I just saw it on YouTube. I was oh, like, I, I just, you. I ran into it. Because I had seen the Hearts of Darkness uh, thing, and I was like, "Oh man, that shit's way too good." Like, man, yeah. So when I, when the commentary thing showed up, I was like, oh, "I'm gonna try it out for a second. and I just was like in it. So, anyway, no, that's great. Apocalypse I just, Now. I, I just wanted to know, like, I asked this Love to that. a lot of guests because you kind of get the feel. If you say in Purple Rain for uh, is great. My mom, I watched that when I was like maybe four. Didn't understand why, like, he was the like. The, you know, when you see every other movie, I watching Gaston and Beauty and the Beast beating fool's ass. Like, I get, I guess I get why bitches like him, but my mom is a perp, is a Prince fanatic. So as a kid, I'm like, the guy with the, 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 the guy dressed like a girl. You like? I was three, four, and then I I get it. The music. I'm like, oh, when I hit like five or six, I understood. Like, oh, he's just Prince. I get it. Like, I'm a dude, but I I get it. So when you say Purple Rain, like his little leg going over that motorcycle to get on, stay here. <laughs> Yo, as a kid, that shit was sick as hell. I was tiny too, so I get it. <laughs> I heard you refer to music, maybe I'm misconstruing it, as, as like colors. 
Do you? It's an actual condition. There's a name for it. We're like producers people in music yeah. actually see different music in different colors in their mind yeah, yeah i feel like i'm like that i associate like color palettes with mm-hmm. different beats you and do stuff. do that shit what the hell uh you it kind of gives you like a vibe or like a yeah i know a few people that are like that and he's he's like that too for sure yeah. oh okay yeah, 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 i was gonna yeah. ask is mm-hmm. that like part of your like yeah, creative it's... vision when mm-hmm. you go into because yeah. you're starting from scratch each time you go into a new beat yeah. essentially, right but like, yeah when i generally when i just start messing up i'm just there's nothing there i'm just blank you know mm-hmm. usually I'm using, there's something that's inspired me, I'm for sure. But I do it every day. I just turn something on and just whatever happens. And it's not always worth hearing, but it's just what I do. Um, and then a color starts forming. And then I just, I just start, that's how I see it. Right? What are your main tools that you use? Like My what? main thing is I still sample the way I always have since the early 90s. Um, still records and DJing and stuff. But now... I'll, I have a lot of synthesizers. I'll play certain things, and I obviously have musicians I work with, some genius genius musicians. Uh, Big Ups, G. Coop, Graham Richards, them dudes, and I, I, other people too, but those two, it's changing my life. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's just <clears throat> every day. You're in, basically in the studio just creating just every day, no life. matter what's going on. Yeah, yeah, every day, yep, every single day. And there's days I don't want to, like I'll just, I'll like, Oh man, nothing. But then that's the day I, I'm like, well, just turn it on. Just yeah. turn it on. Play some SOS band and just hang out. And then you'll you'll find some, you'll find the mood. You know what I mean? I'll find the mood to do something. And then that's that's what happens. Wow. Yeah. Um, I got a question. You guys, were you the one uploading YouTube? Trying to find a balance was a 16 year ago upload. I that's when YouTube basically was starting. You guys have been on YouTube. That video has been on there since YouTube started, essentially. Did you guys That's see That's why we got app? so many views on that one. That, we don't Damn, have a lot of views on dude. Much, I much mean, else. there was three videos on YouTube. <laughs> there was That's trying to find a balance. <laughs> there was that one beer can or bacon <laughs> yeah. video thing. And then, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And there's a, this there was a third yeah. one that had a cat with a hula hoop. Oh, <laughs> dude. The cat is when the cat change, videos change the earth. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So when I saw it, I go, that's say sixteen years. I didn't. That's when YouTube basically started. I didn't even know that though. So you guys were on it back then. Have you ever thought of just uh, re-uploading it, like with a re-edited or remastered or like an anniversary version? Because it's back when YouTube was like this. It's a little box when you watch it. Oh, oh wow! Really? Not even if you can't even yeah. blow it. I don't really watch the videos, so I don't know what none of yeah, them really look I, like. I, didn't know that. I just read the comments. I I, I think just read the comments. <laughs> I, I think. Uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know. I never considered remastering yeah. a YouTube oh, video. Yeah. Could you imagine? Happy that? anniversary, repackaged, yep. remastered. remastered. We have talked about doing this Not as pleasant. a joke. It's coming back to the commentary. We've thought it. We've talked, joked about doing commentary on, Come on. Yeah, having videos and just playing all, all our videos and just talking. Anything shit. you guys released with you guys talking over, it, even if it's back to you in the garage. Yeah. Come on. We were we considered we, we considered yeah. actually putting like uploading streams of us talking over whole albums, <laughs> yeah. where Jeez. it would be like all of life yeah. gives you lemons with us talking over. It mm-hmm. put that on the streaming platforms just for the just for yeah. the taste of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. Just do one, and then you guys will get the response that you need. See, the, the, it's really fun to joke about, but then it's like, okay, so then I'm gonna need you guys to come over on yeah. Thursday, so we. And then that's the part where I go, ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather just write a new song. I would yeah, rather yeah, yeah. spend Thursday writing a new song yeah. than spend Thursday trying yeah. to repackage some old shit. Uh, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, Damn, I, the way you put it. I and even it. listening to the old shit too is kind of it's just it's, it's tough. Yeah, because you you move on and you yeah. just go, what am I gonna do next? Yeah. You know, well, what what else can I yeah. fail at? And how can, <laughs> how can I go back and fix that thing? <laughs> how do I fix that? <laughs> well, so, you're critical. Yeah. Are you yeah, writing yeah. basically every day or just when <laughs> you're doing an album? I mean, like anything, um, if I have the time, you know, like we got kids, we got life going on. But if I have the time to go, if, if I have three hours, then I'm going to write. Not because... I have to, not because I'm like, oh, I'm agonizing. I have to write. <laughs> but because it's what I love to do. So if I can sneak away and go down to the basement for three hours plus, because I'll do three to 30, I will, that's what I would rather be doing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather do that than mm-hmm. watch TV. Yeah. I'd rather do that than watch a movie again. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's, but with that said, sometimes you go and you're like, ah, 
I'm not really angry at nothing. What am I supposed to write about? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What am I supposed to do? She's, she's doing really nice. You know, Damn I, will, I will say this. In recent years with the, with the technique that we're painting with right now, now that he gives me a beat and I force myself to deal with that beat, I don't stop until I have dealt with it. Whether it's something good or something horrible, I'm going to complete this song for better or for worse. Now that that's the thing, writing is a lot, a lot easier, if that makes any sense. Not easier, but, but it's like, getting it going because now i'm like okay well he gave me this i gotta do something with it whereas back in the day maybe i'd get a folder full of beats yeah. or whatever and then he would just be like what about this one and eh, what about this one too many uh, options now i get this one beat and i'm just like ah you know what i'm gonna write about cars <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's ever gonna hear it but at least i got oh, yeah. at least i had it out. at least i got it spinning i got mm -hmm. things moving you know what i'm saying and i had a good time you know what i mean like and the other thing is for me with writing is I'm by myself mostly. Sometimes he's around, but I would say for 90% of the time, I write all alone. Not another person in the room, just me. So I'm allowed to be as vulnerable as I want to be. And that's a weird word, but no, it, it, it makes it, sense. It's the word. And then if I hear it and I'm not embarrassed to hear it, I give it to him to hear. And if I'm not embarrassed to let him hear it, then I know, okay, I can be this vulnerable in front of people. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and so with that said, that all of that is all a part of my process now. When I write, I'm, I, I get to write about whatever I want. I get to write about anything, but the rule is it's gotta be some shit that I actually understand. I can't just be Googling and writing about, you know, <laughs> science. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it has to be something I know. You know what I mean? Like, and, and so writing is, a, I don't, easier is not the right word because it's not like it's, simpler to do but it's easier to get into it's easier to throw myself into the job because yeah I, it's just wide open you know what i'm saying that makes sense yeah do either of you foresee ever utilizing any ai tools in music making writing it's going to come to a day where you say i want an up-tempo beat that sounds like this person's <laughs> style that has such and such bpm click I, all those elements sound like the, everything that i like doing so what that yeah. seems like it'd be <laughs> taking, fun at it. Yeah, then so <laughs> like to, someone wrote for you. To, yeah, to each his own. But uh, you know, I also think you can never say never, I guess, because I remember when I very first started DJing and making beats and stuff in the eighties, I never would have thought I would use a computer. You know mm. what I mean? Like okay. when I was in high school, computer was an elective class that I didn't take. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, you know, whatever, you know. Uh -huh. So now here we are. I can actually do the shit, you know, on a computer. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's scary to me. Like I'm a graphic artist. Like it could essentially put graphic artists out of business or be your greatest tool. Like mm. you're going to have to figure out how to utilize it and figure out the skills Sky around when you're an artist like bend because yeah, yeah, skynet Sky for real you for know real, like real. like any yeah. art that challenges commerce and back and forth the truth is this the best rapper is broke the best graphic artist is starving so as a graphic artist and as a rapper it's not that ai is going to be better than us that should be our concern because there's people out there better than you that don't have your careers. Mm -hmm. sure. And that's just art and commerce, you know? Um, your goal is how to present this to people, how to communicate this to people. That's the thing that is in the way of everybody, you know? Otherwise, all art would be available for us to see, but the truth is it comes down to how it's presented and given the opportunity to be in front of people's faces, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's really your battle with AI with this art shit it's not really and this is just all opinion i really have no idea i just thought of this right now yeah. um i but i think that it's 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 not about it's not about AIA taking your job because it's better than you because there's hella people better than you you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it's more about how are you positioning yourself to ensure that you can communicate yeah. to these people you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and, and so i don't think ai can take that i don't think yeah. that you know i think like we saw a robot delivering food today oh, down a side crazy as yeah. hell and, weird, and, weird. and and it was like oh i just you know he took uber eats his job <laughs> 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 it was like uber One eats took right the pizza bike. delivery yeah. job and, and so on and so forth like shit's always gonna there's True. always stuff but you gotta figure out how to work in that how to work around that, how to work alongside that. Because it's here, you know, 
I, I can't remember who, but it's some shit I read a long time ago. Like humanity's shit is all about convenience and quality of life. How can you be, I don't want to say as lazy as possible, but let's Kinda. break it down to that. How, how can you be yeah. as lazy as possible, but still get over <laughs> it? And that's what technology is. Yeah. That's what technology yeah. is for, is to make yeah. you have the ability to have as much fun as possible, be as lazy as possible. Mm. So, so we're here, we're doing it. So figure out how to work within it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, that's a great point. The, the, the robot too, is, it looks like a lunchbox. It does. It's just it looks like, like that Wally ass. shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Well, remember in Star Wars, the one box? Box with the feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that oh, thing. Oh, yeah. And a little yeah, bit yeah. small. Star Wars reference? I did. Yeah. You got one in. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dang, I wonder if you can just open this here as yeah. it's going by. And just, oh, so know. you're a Star Wars fan? I got something for you you'll fucking like. What is it? I'm not a huge Star Wars guy. I watched it when I was a kid. I watched the old ones, right? I'm from Merced, California. Uh, it's by Modesto. You know, uh, what the hell's his name? The guy that writes it. Oh, George Lucas. George Lucas. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was saying Lucas Films. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, George yeah. Lucas. He's from Modesto, which is not far. We're the gateway to Yosemite. I was delivering pizza. I had an old school. I have an 86 Monte Carlo, like a kind of like a training day looks like it, but it's not the Grand National Regal. But yeah. I'm driving. It's my parking lot, my pizza spot. I'm about to open. I'm fucking smoking a joint. I'm going to the gas station. And then as I'm going to the. Oh, I just quit the pizza spot. It was right there. And I see this old man with a beard on a motorcycle with chaps and glasses. And I'm like, chaps and glasses and the button up? All right, fuck yeah, old man. Mm -hmm. And he's typing on his phone. I drive by and he looks, every old man looks at me and goes, because the car. Yeah. So I always imagine every every older man that looks at me is like, so I see him, he's looking at me like, I'm like, what? I'm just driving. But he's looking at me like, what do you want? I'm like, okay. And I go to the gas station, it's closed. I'm like, for real? I come back through and I look at him. And as I cross, he's like, Kind of like, do you want a picture? I'm like, no. And I stop and I'm like, that is fucking George Lucas. And I look and I'm oh, like, shit. holy shit, it's fucking George Lucas in Merced. I'm mm. like, I wish I was more of a Star Wars fan. I would be like, yo, thank <laughs> you, sir. But I remember I saw it like, my homie's a fanatic. And I'm yeah. like, I, I see him, not you. This is sad. But yeah, George Lucas is mad cool. And he rides Harleys with chaps. You never would have thought. Yeah, yeah, he rides with chaps. <laughs> That's it. That's my only fucking Star Wars yeah. thing I ever had. I like the. What do you fucking want, man? That's when he looked at me like, yeah. "You want a picture?" And I looked at him like, "You want to take a picture of the car?" Because all old men, hey, let me take a picture. It was a battle. Oh, we're yeah. both yeah, looking at each other. Wants a picture. You want to take a picture? Yeah. That's because they always do. I'm in a small town, mm -hmm. cherry ass car. Like, I get it, old man. You gotta cross yeah. the streams and be like, "Hey, would you like to take a picture of you in my car?" Yeah, you know what I mean. You want me to be like a a Star Wars character for you? <laughs> which one would you be? You know which one I would be. No, Dark. that's fucked up. I'm not gonna make fun. He of He goes by Dope as Yola. So last year, Yoda. I'm not even a Star Yoda. Wars fan. Dope as Yoda. Yoda. Uh, Everybody did make I did it on May 4th last year. Uh, the guy's bong in his hand and the ears and everything. No, I, I want to be Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> my kids told me a joke they saw on the internet about me bringing up Yoda. Um, it was like a it was like a meme about like uh, describe a movie in like five words, mm -hmm. and it was a picture of you know Luke Skywalker with Yoda on his back, and it said, um, <laughs> <laughs> "Swamp Frog convinces kid to kill his dad" or some shit. Like that. Oh, <laughs> it was like, that's not talking <laughs> frog. <laughs> talking frog convinces kid to kill his dad. I thought that was funny. That's dead on exactly what happened. If you want to break it, the fuck <laughs> you down. know. I got another one of the jokes that my kids are telling right now. The little kid, the five year old, says, um, "Oh man, this one was good too." He's like, "Do you want to get babies to stop crying on airplanes? Stop." Making them think airplanes get eaten. What? Do you guys got King kids? Kong? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. psychological. Yeah. Oh. oh, it's a joke though. No, oh, okay. it's not that deep. <laughs> I was like, I was like, all right. <laughs> it's not that deep, but. <laughs> Damn, man. I'm sorry for the swing and misses on these. I'm over here. No, I do. It's, 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 it's timing. I got to I gotta work timing. it out. I, it's what I'm doing is I'm here working it out. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? That's what this is for. Yeah, but, it's a stand up. But I'll say this. This is, this, is also, this is also like older guys talking about their kids at this point. But since he said that, my kid on an airplane, my son, <laughs> five years old, two, or four at the time, 
taken, he never been on an airplane that he can remember anyway, or taken off, and he goes, man, this is better than riding on a dragon. Oh, sick. <laughs> it was awesome, dude. I was That's like, that's you know the funniest you shit ever Sick heard. ass seats if you said that. <laughs> yeah, because you know he's imaginative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I did. Man, I want to be I've like been that. on dragons, yeah. but this shit, yeah. <laughs> No, this one is, I don't have any kids, but this one is, uh, he has three kids. I have no kids, so I, I live through FaceTime, like, what's up, little child? And I see you grow and, like, make jokes for this fool, and then she's getting so big, it's so weird. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm not ready for that, but you guys are the, no, no, the no, fathers. Yeah, take your time on that shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So. I'm going to wait as long as you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. Stay He's here. He's wildly responsible. Stay as I long as you can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, dude, I still want to, like, smoke a joint in my hallway and yeah. walk around and look at pictures. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Smoke. I always say I went from directly from hiding weed from my ma to hiding weed from my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very true. If you want to break these yeah. down at their cores, man. Yeah. Um, I know you guys are on time limits. Yeah. I understand. I know we're at past your time and stuff. Yeah. But real quick, album. Where can everybody get it? Where can everybody grab it? Is it on? Obviously, you check it on Spotify. But if they want to grab it, you said you can get hard copies. You can get. Oh yeah, I have a website. Um, it's called atmosphere <laughs> and it's like all our merch um, atmosphere sucks.com yep, 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 yep love yeah, it yeah, yeah it's got all yeah. our merch it's got links to get to listening to stuff it's got but also it's when i say my it's because i put up personal stuff on there it's all kinds of stuff that i write and pictures that i put oh wait no 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 actually that's just, a ebay one it's just merch <laughs> uh all this shit's there you know but it, you could stream it i'm sure everywhere that things are streamed. Strength. <laughs> I like that. Strength. That's a new one. Strength. And then what about live performances after that? We'll we'll be oh, on tour uh, May fifth. The record comes out, and then just a few days later, we start in London. Um, we start in London. run around yeah, Europe yeah, for yeah. a couple of weeks, then we come home and and and, and hit um, Alaska and Colorado and uh, Monterey. Monterey. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then in early July we go on a longer tour with. Slightly stupid and sublime with Rome and the movement, and we'll be out with them for the remainder of the summer. And then there's probably some more stuff coming up. You know, usually you try to get out there and move around with people as much as possible before you get old. Yeah, it's good advice. It's gonna be a busy year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Is there anywhere that you really like look forward to when you go out on the road? Is there like a particular country or city or that we can? You favorite? know. I don't know. I like, I really, there isn't anywhere I don't look forward to, you mm. know, and I feel fortunate for that because there's nowhere that I'm like, what? We got to go there. It's awesome. Is there? I can't even mm. think. No. Because everybody's got record stores. And so, <laughs> and so we go there and we way. visit the record store. You know I what love I'm saying? That. And then yeah. uh, play a show for some people that came out to yeah. smile. You know what I mean? And so, yeah. so everywhere is pretty fun. I guess my favorite place to play would probably be, you know, West Coast. Uh, the mountain states i love playing the mountain states as well um i love yeah. the midwest i love the east coast <laughs> uh, i love florida <laughs> i love i love i love performance shows in in in, in texas it kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier like when you're when people come in to see you and tell you you did a good job like how can you be mad at yeah. that yeah. It, no matter where you are even if there's even only 50 people at your show it doesn't who gives a fuck you know yep. Well, I'm so I glad to hear that, though. <laughs> yeah. Like that I mean, means you just love it no matter what. Yeah. Like even if I never made money in a lot, I could still love. I love to write. You say, "I wake if I can get away and just write." So it, it, you guys are passionate about it, you. and like yeah. as a fan, it's, I'm super stoked to hear. It's that. no cooler life when that's who you are when you're an artist like that. And this cult following you guys have built is mm -hmm. is forever. When we're fucking all ninety, it's still mm -hmm. gonna be there. So yeah. that's the whole point. And I know, uh, like I said, I know the time's out, and I waited. Marty knows. Uh -huh. I did pretty well, guys. You guys are my favorite group of all time. Uh oh, it's here Tech comes. Nine, yeah. Mac Dre, Slug, all time favorite rap. We've been preaching online for ten years. So for this, I, I'm glad I got through the whole thing. <laughs> but guys, thank you very much. This has been very fucking awesome hey, for me. I, I, I listen. This. I appreciate you guys, and I, I appreciate uh, the length of time that you have spent dedicated to listening to our shit. It means yeah. a lot. Um, you are officially a lifer. And so with that, we're going to get you like a little punch card, a membership. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like oh, so, yeah. Yeah. And then every time that you go to a show, you get a punch. And then after like 10 punches, you get punched. Oh, shit. <laughs> I thought you say some high fives. I landed one. <laughs> you got one. I landed one. You got one. it. Oh, oh, man. Man. Hey, I'm on the way out. Drop hey. the mic. <laughs>
guys. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate it. May 5th. Thank you. Oh, um, no, I have it over there. I got you. I got a bunch of stuff for you guys. All right. Oh, man. Thank you guys so, so much cool, for being man. here. I appreciate you. it. Appreciate you. Super stoked. Thank you guys, guys this really has been the Atmosphere it. episode. And Slug, thank you so much for being here. From Marty, from me, have a dope ass day. Thanks for watching the podcast. If you thought this was dope, you'll like this episode too. And don't forget, the best way to support the show, tell a homie.